Hi, my name is Tristan O'Connor and I'm a digital sales specialist here at ClearTouch Interactive. Today we're going to be talking about the 6000K Plus ports, starting with these two right down here. So to the right of the power button, you'll see we have two USB ports and those USB ports are actually active USB ports. So they switch with the input. So if you were to go from we'll say currently I'm on the PC. If I went over to the Android, I'd be able to use whatever device was plugged in here, uh, no matter what input I'm on. And that means that if I had a, a keyboard or a mouse plugged in, they're gonna be able to work on any of those inputs. Now, as we go to the bottom of the panel, you'll see we have another set of ports. At the bottom of the panel, you'll see the SPDIF output. This sends out line level audio output, so the audio of the panel can be controlled by an external audio device or controller. Next, we have the USB 2.0 port, which is sometimes used for firmware updates. After that is the VGA port for connecting legacy devices. Be sure to utilize the audio input here when using VGA connections, as audio is not transferred through a VGA cable. After that, we have the LAN port, now this functions as a dual port gig switch in case there's only one network drop in the room. You can daisy chain into another device to give it a hardline network connection. The LAN port will also allow you to connect to your network on both the Android and the PC module without having to run multiple ethernet cables. Next up is the RS-232 port, which can be used for serial control, for example, running these through a Crestron or Extron system. And finally, we have an audio out for an external speaker system. So the last set of ports I wanna talk about is to the right side of the panel here. And if you take a look on the right side of your panel, you'll see a number of different ports as well. On the right side of the panel, you'll see we have the HDMI out port. This can be used to connect to a monitor, another panel, or any other device with an HDMI input. It will stream all inputs on the panel, as well as the Android's universal overlay system, like the toolbar or collage. Next, we have two USB 3.0 ports for connecting devices directly to the Android system. Further down, you'll see we have two touch cable inputs and three HDMI inputs. You wanna check out the related post with regards to how to properly connect devices in these ports to ensure touch response. And then finally, we feature the USB-C input, which allows you to connect a device, calibrate, utilize touch, and even charge that connected device with just one cable. Hopefully after this video, you have a better understanding of how to connect different devices into the panel itself. 